Hey man, so I had this video sitting around and I realized I never finished it. I'm about to be done with my first grow with this light and I wanted to make sure I posted this video before that one comes out. There are a lot of sweet features I've put into this light and a lot's changed through the making of this video. First off, the fans. I took them out because I didn't like the way they collected dust, they didn't seem to cool anything off, and they sounded way louder than I wanted them to. Now what you're looking at inside is the third and final layout of the Sonoffs and connectors and drivers. Originally I had the HLG 240H C1400B, but I upped it to the 1750 milliamp version. I also had a four channel Sonoff and I switched that for a dual. I had both reds on one driver and then I realized if I separated them, I could do the Emerson effect and flower initiation more effectively. This was the original layout that I had started with and you could probably just by looking at it already tell what the problems were. Terrible wire management and the wire organization was subpar and definitely was something that I would need to change. Another cool piece of tech that I'm using is the Amalek wireless controller sold by Pacific Light Concepts. This device allows me to dim my light remotely when the room gets too hot. And then I use the Sonoff TH10 for humidity and temperature readings so that I can see it on the app and it's about 16 bucks so it's pretty cheap. So this is what the face looks like. The PCBs are 14 inches by 12 inches and I have two of them so it's about 24 wide and then the XPE Far red and deep red cutter boards are 290 millimeter. So overall with the lips, it's 17 and a half inches by 24 inches. And I tend to run it around 230 watts. I used thermal tape to adhere the PCBs to the aluminum to work as a heat sink and have better heat dissipation through that. But the problem was that the screws that I used to hold down the PCBs evenly also screw into the driver cover in the back. And that makes it really annoying because I have so many screws that go in. It's about 15 screws altogether, 20 screws to just remove the front panel with the LEDs to get to the drivers. And it was a really bad design choice. And I definitely will go back to the drawing board on this one after this grow, plus the wires I have to kind of weave through two sheets of aluminum. And that is kind of annoying, but doesn't seem safe to have wires rubbing against that much stuff. Even if I put the grommets in that I did, it just doesn't seem the greatest, most effective way to do it. Next time I'll be looking into snap in connectors for like DC, probably like waterproof so that I don't have my wires running through the panels. I can separate them easier. I'll probably do a smaller driver cover that doesn't encompass the whole PCB plate. I will try to connect them with less screws so that I don't have as much to unscrew if I need to upgrade or change something. But with that said, right now as it is, I get pretty good spread and coverage plus the balance and the thermal dissipation. And I am pretty satisfied with the outcome of this light, even with the small annoyances that it has. Now, as you see me put it together on screen, you can see how many screws I actually use. All the screws except for the center ones on the ohms boards drill into the lip on the driver cover and it's a pretty big pain in the ass to work on i will say again i really do like this thermal tape these pcb boards do not require any heat sinks when they run at the 1750 milliamps or lower they would need heat sinks if they ran at the 2100 milliamps but i do just like having the ability to have extra surface area and thermal dissipation with these boards because it helps with keeping my room cooler especially in this heat wave we have in san diego Another change I made is I had started with having all of the wires come out of the same hole right next to the red PCB strips. Then I made some different choices of wire placement, but the final choice was putting the wires connecting to the ohms boards coming out of the side of the actual light and then wrapping up and around, and it gave it a really clean look that I think works a lot better. And like all of my ohms boards, these are all LM561Bs running at 5000 and 3500 Kelvin mixtures. Now it's just a matter of installing it and it fits completely in there. Side to side coverage is great. The front to back is a little limited. I can't turn it because I have outlet boxes in the way. And then if you're wondering about the tubing, that's for my CO2. Now I do want to say these readings were off a 1400 milliamp driver, so they might seem a little bit weak. I had changed the driver to the 1750 midway through veg and I just never redid the readings. But here's a par rating basically with a hydro farm par meter, so they might not be super accurate or good, but at least you'll have an idea of what this light puts out. I went at 18 inches from the top of the grow lid and a two by two square at 223 watts. At dead center, you can see it's about 708 to 705. I'm not gonna read you all the numbers because I'll give you some notes as we go through. I'm sure you could see for yourself what the numbers are. So in all honesty, let's put some footnotes in here. I did up the driver to 1750 milliamps, which will obviously give me more power and a better par. The par meter I'm using is the cheapest one on the market. So it's 
not probably that accurate, but it'll give you a ballpark estimation of what it is. And during the grow, I did leave the light at the 18 inches the entire time and kind of let the plants grow into it. I know that dropping the light to 12 inches and dimming it would have given me the same par for less watts, but I wanted the plants to grow into the light, and I didn't like the coverage. I felt the front and back were being cut off when I dropped the light too far down. And in having the light so close to the plants, you would get squattier plants, and I was looking to have a little bit of a stretch because I run a scrog, so I wanted that stretch to fill out the screen. And it did a really nice job. I have really good coverage over my 2x2 because of the stretching that I allowed. But this was my grow light specifically made for this cabinet that I customized with a custom hydro system and now a custom grow light. I'll have some results from this light pretty soon, so hopefully those will come up, and thanks for letting me just show it off. And as always, grow it funky, keep it fresh.